Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about a brush I designed, the Sterling Edwards Blending and Glazing Brush. This brush is somewhat unique in, in that it is a stiff bristle brush that I use primarily for watercolors. I think what you'll find interesting about this brush is it does a fantastic job for blending edges, for example, lost and found edges. Also, it's a great brush for glazing because it holds a lot of paint and a lot of water. In addition to that, there's some special effects you can get with this brush, such as painting trees, painting grass. I think you'll find it very interesting. Let's spend a few minutes and take a look at some of the ways we can use this brush. As you see by the packaging, these come in three different sizes. I have a one inch, an inch and a half, and a two inch. They all have a very distinctive uh, blue handle made out of plastic that has my signature on it. And let me get these out of the way real quick, and I'm going to show you why I designed this brush the way I did. They have certain features. This handle is somewhat unique in the brush world, and I designed this for a very specific reason. Because it fits very comfortably right in the cusp of the hand. It also has a, 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 a rust-proof ferrule, which is great for grabbing hold of and putting a lot of pressure on the brush. Now, being that this is a bristle brush, we want to really apply pressure and use this to move paint, move water, and kind of push the paint into the paper, not just skirt the surface of the paper like a soft brush does. So this thing fits very comfortably. I can get a good grasp on the ferrule and really go to it. Another feature is a little rib right here where the ferrule and the handle come together. Now, I did this on purpose, designed this like this, to keep the water from getting underneath the ferrule as much as possible. We shouldn't leave our brushes sitting in water, but let's face it, we all do it from time to time. And I, sometimes water builds up under the ferrule. When you put the brush in the paper, it just gushes out, and you have an, just an incredible amount of back runs and unnecessary water. So this isn't totally waterproof, but it does eliminate the vast majority of the water getting under the ferrule of the brush. Another feature, of course, is the seamless rust-proof ferrule. Uh, this brush is designed to give you many years of use. Uh, since the handle is made out of plastic, the, the, the paint's not going to flake and fall off like you sometimes see with wooden brushes. Well, now that I've explained the design for the brush, let's take a look at what you can do with this. Now, I called this my blending and glazing brush because it does an excellent job of blending edges as well as glazing. For example, I'm using a piece of uh, Fabriano 300-pound cold-pressed paper. I'm going to put just a small amount of color on here. Uh, let's take some of this pretty turquoise blue. And as you'll see, this brush can push a lot of paint and water into the paper. I've only gone to the palette one time, and I'm still able to move paint. Now, if I want to come back and glaze the color on top of that, all I have to do is just go to my next color. In this case, I'm using an Indian yellow. And I can very easily glaze onto that and get some very dramatic effects. Another great thing about this, since this is a bristle brush instead of a soft brush, I get these nice uh, dry brush effects on various papers. In this case, the, the Fabriano works beautifully. And I can uh, emulate painting grasses, for example, by holding the brush almost parallel and very lightly pulling up on it. Get some wonderful grassy shapes. Uh, I can make pine trees with it by just pulling the brush out like this. And it's, it's fun to play with. I think you'll find that the more you use this brush, the more you're going to find creative ways to use it. Now, as far as the blending goes, uh, let me get some more paint here. In this case, I'm using a Payne's Gray, so it shows up really well. One thing I want to do is lose an edge. Now, this is one problem a lot of artists have, is they try to lose an edge on a painting. So let's just say I want to lose this edge and blend this out to a, just have the edge kind of vanish. We all have a tendency to blend from the color blending out. This is the smaller brush, the medium sized brush. I'm getting most water out of the brush. The brush is clean, but most water is being taken out of the brush. It's barely damp. And if I start on the dry side and blend in, I can very easily kind of work towards the paint. And I can very easily soften that edge and just lose it without dragging paint all the way across my painting. And this is why I call this the blending brush as well. So I think you'll enjoy these brushes. They're a lot of fun to work with. They're very reasonably priced, and they're built to last for a long time. If you have a chance, uh, try one or two of them. Just see what you can do, and give yourself a learning curve, of course. Like any new product that comes out, you've got to get the feel for it. But I really do think you'll find these brushes interesting, and you'll see some demonstrations uh, in time of entire paintings done almost exclusively with these brushes. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you try these out, and I hope you enjoy them. And if you get a chance, look at my website, sterlingedwards.com, and you can see a wide variety of paintings and painting styles, mostly done using these brushes. Thank you.